Good evening. Welcome to Moonshot Nutrition. My name's Addison. And this, hopefully, at least for a while, until some other weird controversy comes up, this will be the last uh, episode on protein powder for quite some time. The last thing I wanted to talk to you tonight is about the concept of undenatured whey. Now, for those of you that don't care, skip this video. If you're already watching and you don't care, skip this video. But if you have been pulled in by this um, sales pitch by people before, you got to get the undenatured way. Then you might want to listen. Here's the concept of undenatured way. The concept of undenatured way is that as the raw milk comes from the cow, the whey protein within that milk is going to have a very specific uh, protein structure. And if it is undenatured, that is to say unchanged, then that protein structure versus a, a modified protein structure will give you an, uh, uh, an improved glutathione response to your whey protein. And I already discussed in the previous video that uh, whey protein is actually the probably best natural food out there to try to increase glutathione production within your body. So that's the theory. Undenatured whey protein particularly grass-fed, as I mentioned in the other video. But in general, undenatured whey protein is what gives you the maximum glutathione response. Okay, that's the theory. Now here's the problem. First off, all whey protein powders came from pasteurized milk. Now for any of us that have ever actually boiled milk, what you will quickly see when you boil milk is that you start to get little floaties. Little, little guys. Guess what those floaties are? They're whey protein. They're uh, casein protein. There are bits and pieces of protein that are starting to denature and thus will no longer be stable inside a uh, liquid medium. And they stop being uh, dissolvable, basically. They're no longer soluble is the word I was looking for. Um, because they were denatured. Okay, and just because they're no longer, even if they're still soluble, there's still a good chance they were denatured. And when you pasteurize milk, you take milk to a temperature that's beyond the boiling point. You see the problem? If all milk has to be boiled that you're going to make protein powders from, and actually goes beyond boiling, then how on earth are you able to make the claim that it's undenatured? That is an interesting question. Um, and quite frankly, the answer is I don't know. I believe, I'm not sure, I haven't actually verified it. I think that the way the FDA allows them to get away with that is that it's undenatured relative to how the whey protein is after pasteurization. But um, at that point in time, who cares? We don't know how much it got modified from the original thing, so... Not really undenatured at all. And then there's also some questions about whether or not it gets denatured in the, the secondary process it goes through in order to um, separate the whey protein from the other things in there, which is it's called cross-flow filtration, ultra-cross-flow filtration. Other groups will talk about ion exchange. Um, just know this, the lower temperature cross-flow filtration will denature the protein far less than will the ion exchange. Um, but even the low temperature cross-flow filtration, by the way, it's just basically a screen with really, really, really small holes. Way goes through, the other stuff doesn't, under pressure. Because it's under pressure, you can still damage and change the proteins. Um, so, needless to say, it, it, it's kind of weird. On denatured protein, I'm not sure how they get away with it uh, because I know that if you take the protein found in raw cow's milk and heat it past boiling, you're going to start denaturing it. Feel free to do your own research here. I guarantee you, you're denaturing it. So I really don't know how they get away with saying it. Uh, secondly, as I've mentioned in the previous video, because all of this is in the name of producing more glutathione, um, because glutathione is just the cysteine, glutamine, and glycine, three simple amino acids, um, one has to ask yourself, if your digestive system is built to rip proteins apart, which is exactly what it's designed to do, using pepsin, trypsin, and chymotrypsin, enzymes that will do exactly that, into little dye and tripeptides, then why would it matter what the overall three-dimensional larger structure of the protein is if all your body is going to do is tear it apart anyway? 
doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? Um, I've never seen anybody answer this question adequately either. Again, we're just supposed to take it on fact, on faith, I guess, that it produces this larger glutathione response, even though we know that whether it's denatured or not, whether it's grass-fed or not, um, it's the same amino acids in there. Um, again, it's, yeah, weird. I don't even have words to ex describe it. It's just so many people talk about this, and they claim there's some kind of science there, but I, I can't really find it. Not in any way that's actually meaningful, anywho. Uh, the last problem that I have with this is there actually is some pretty good science to show that the speed at which you absorb that whey protein, so whey protein concentrate versus isolate versus hydrolysate, uh, hydrolysate absorbs the fastest, and hydrolysate seems to produce the largest glutathione response. Um, the isolate is second, and it absorbs slightly slower. And then the concentrate is the slowest absorbing, and it has the smallest bump to glutathione response. They've actually measured that. And sure enough, that would actually make sense. Um, if your body gets a mad rush of protein, it's trying to think of what to do. Hey, let's crank out some more glutathione, among other things, um, in an effort to try to use up this protein that hit our blood supply really fast. And as I've discussed earlier, uh, meat doesn't tend to do that. So, cool that your body will produce more glutathione. But again, please just remember, Moonshot Nutrition is all about what matters to your biology. It, the undenatured stuff doesn't seem to matter. The grass-fed stuff doesn't seem to matter. It's just the form of protein that you're taking and how fast it absorbs and how many carbs are in it and if there's any fat in it and so on. These are the things you have to track. Undenatured and grass-fed are marketing tools and or reasons to do it if you want to be more ecologically friendly. Well, come to an end of what I hope for a while at least is going to be the end of my protein videos. My name's Addis and this is Moonshot Nutrition. Thank you so much for watching. Make the world a better place. Good night.